You know, when we really get down to it, Gojo's unsealing was so unserious, bro. Really had Hana in this outfit while everyone over here hiding under some sandbags. Niggas were really sitting in the chairs over here like they were waiting for the ball to drop on New Year's Eve. But hey, don't let the shenanigans fool you. Gojo's pull up after escaping the prison realm was one of the greatest entrances of all time. Pete Gan. After Hana uses Jacob's ladder to hit the back of the prison realm, everyone notices that it disappeared. But just before everyone starts wondering if Gojo's gone for good, an earthquake rips through the area and they know something's up. Then we cut over to Kenny. He's over here explaining how he placed the prison realm in the deepest part of the Japan trench and had layers of cursed spirits guarding the area like Bob the Robber just in case Gojo made it out. And that was even if he escaped in the first place. Usually, if the back of the prison realm is broken, the average entity inside will perish as well. But y'all already know, Gojo's anything but that. All the odds against him and he still made it out. Came out that box looking fresh as hell too. Nigga was in jail for 19 days and he still managed to keep a fresher lineup than I do. A fade that fresh would have had me posing like Superman too. Damn. And I don't know who this man Kenny was feeling like. Acting like Rachel Nichols in the post game interview or something. How does it feel to be finally free? Gojo had to put that boy in his place and tell him to choose his words carefully cause they gonna be his last. And this right here is the face of a man who saw a thousand years of work nearly go down the drain in an instant. Niggas really be moving different when their lives on the line bruh. Had his ass turning into Spider Man just to escape. Shoulda gotten cooked right here too. But the goat himself pulls up to save the day. As they clash, Sukuna reminds him of the promise that he made early in the show. That Gojo would be the first person he killed after he taken over quote unquote that brat's body. And in the end, that was Megami. <laughs> Boom. He over here talking about some, I will finish you. And I can't even lie, I'm the biggest Sukuna fan, but even I know this was some cap. 15 fingers and he's in Megami's body? That nigga's getting a first class ticket straight to Cancun. And Gojo's on timing too. Shit up laughs in this man's face at the thought of that and calls him a bitch for running away from Yuji. Urama pipes up like, how dare you? Just for Gojo to absolutely rock that shit. Type of things that happen when a bench player tries to move like a starter. Really did all that glazing for Sukuna. Just for him not to even care. Really sidestepped that. And it looks like they about to go at it. When Kenny comes over trying to make sure Sukuna is going to keep that promise that they got going on. Whatever that is. And Gojo over here trolling. It was good to see that the prison realm hadn't taken away his sense of humor. After asking what day it was, which was November 19th, he decides to set their fight date for Christmas Eve. Kenny questions him if he's going to lose. And he's like, nah, I'd win. And thus our story begins. You are not the watcher, my guy. Stop saying that. Fast forward a month and we finally here. As we see Gojo along with Uber Boy make it to the top of the building with Miss Utahime and Grandpa, everyone is locked in. While Utahime starts going crazy. Incantations, hand signs, dances, instruments. Using this ritual, she was able to achieve 120% of her cursed technique's normal effect. And Gojo locked in too. Doesn't miss a beat bringing out his technique, recites his incantations, and that 200% output fires that hollow purple. Sukuna, who was over here trying to be nonchalant, doesn't realize how strong the attack is until it's too late. And props to Sukuna, cause no matter the attack or the occasion, he's still gonna come out that bitch raw as hell. Managed to have more aura than Gojo in this panel, even though his ass was the one who got snug. After Sukuna pops out, Gojo says some, hey, you better not get the wrong idea, cause you're the challenger here. Nerdy ass. And Sukuna is over here confused, cause he's pretty hyped for someone who just used a sneak attack. Which is valid, not gonna lie. And one thing about Sukuna, if he's gonna roast you, he's gonna do that shit elegantly. Calls this man a nameless fish, a bit fresher than the others, but still nameless. And he's ready to peel those scales. But Gojo's more concerned now why he's still using Megami's face. Sukuna probably thought that he would hold back if he had it on. But Gojo's already had enough experience beating Megami's ass, so he's gonna go all out. And I know this ain't even about Megami, but having your worst enemy steal your body to fight your stepdad while he's wearing your biological dad's fit is nasty work. Like this ain't even me being a hater right now. It's just like, damn nigga, you really just trash. But anyway, let's move on. Also, it's a damn shame that Gojo ended up taking off this fit because it was so tough, but whatever. Then they start boxing, throwing straight hands. And as Sukuna goes in for a right, Gojo goes down low. Gives him a two finger salute saying sayonara and puts him up against a window. And all Sukuna can do is be amazed, saying some, oh me, oh my, as he gets boomed through the entire function. He gets up happy as hell, just to get his shit rocked again. And Gojo starts going ham, starts stomping on the ground like Godzilla, drops Sukuna off, and then sends him up and over into a building. But Sukuna not getting cooked like that though. He bounces off, pops up, and hits a dismantle off a of fadeaway. Doing his best Westbrook impersonation and completely airballing what hit in the building in the back. And Gojo was as confused as I was when I first saw this. Had to hit a double take to make sure he wasn't seeing things. But as Sukuna comes in, feeling himself with that no look right hook, 
The building he slashed comes down on top of them. Sukuna throws up a door and gets ready to attack, and Gojo does the same. And as they send their attacks, we see the building collapse, with these two coming out the dust to his hill. But Gojo says he's gonna blame this on Sukuna. And Sukuna's like, I know you not talking. You think they best friends or something with the way they interact. And you know the fight is gonna be fire when they doing shit like this in the pre-game warmups. And they waste no time starting round one, starting off with this dual domain expansion. And Gege was really in his bag in this page right here, bro. One of my favorite panels in JJK. Narrator starts saying how they are evenly matched as the two sure hit guarantees overlap and cancel each other out and whoever's domain collapses first will be in serious trouble. The domains were evenly matched, at least in the barrier they were, but y'all know from Shibuya, Sukuna's domain range deeper than a Curry 3. And since his domain stretches out further than Gojo's barrier, along with the fact that the barrier of a domain is weaker on the outside, he was able to break it. And if I was Gojo, I'd be mad as hell right now. Cause how did nobody tell him that Sukuna could use an open domain? The sources really just threw him out there like them baby swim training videos, but gave him no help. Sukuna gives that boy Gojo a devious grin, and we see that first slash hit his neck. First time in years this man probably been hit like this. And this panel right here really had them Twitter warriors turning into licensed PhDs, trying to figure out if Gojo was okay, just for him to heal up with RCT in the next chapter. But since his domain collapsed, he can no longer use his technique to protect himself or escape the range of Sukuna's domain. So he's cooked. And with a devious smile on his face, Sukuna starts beating that ass. And he was enjoying watching this for real, bro. Zoom in and you can see him laughing on top of his shrine like a madman. And Gojo crazy too. Dude really ate this shit while saying his curse technique was better. And he was smiling on top of that too. That man's a demon. After that onslaught, he hits the dash. Sukuna comes in with a Hall of Fame chase down, not letting him get away. He kicks him, and Gojo responds in with a knee. But Sukuna counters that by wrapping his legs around Gojo. And Gojo counters that by attempting to bash his head into the ground. They're really going counter for counter. They hop back up, and Gojo decides to pull out new shadow style. But something like that will only buy him a little time against a domain like Sukuna's. Sukuna steps into the ring, whiffs on a punch, but gets his get back when Gojo's simple domain collapses. And he just pops another one. Got Sukuna bored already, and everyone's like, damn, no technique, no RCT. Is Gojo gonna lose? Just for him to pull up on Sukuna, cock back, and hit him with a point blank reversal red. This man really replenished his burnt out curse technique with RCT. Y'all know how crazy that is, bruh? This man Gojo really was a generational talent. And I love that no matter how many times these dudes get beat up, they fits always stay clean. This nigga Gojo was getting cooked by that malevolent shrine, and them all white pants don't even got a scratch. It's crazy. He over here wondering if Sukuna can expand his domain's range, and Sukuna's like, hey, bet. Got Kusakabe over here stressed out. Gojo pops his domain once more. But this time, switching the internal and external conditions of the barrier, making it easier for him to defend against outside attacks. Gojo says let's take this from the top, and they start throwing hands. And Gojo notices that this man Sukuna can use domain expansion and amplification at the same time. This nigga different. And Gojo hits the damn. That's crazy. I don't really care. Weaves and gives him a nasty gut punch that got him clenching his teeth. But as Sukuna turns around and grabs him from behind, Gojo notices something. Sukuna's domain sure hit effect has been turned off. Normally, this would mean that he would have been cooked since Gojo's infinite void would have hit him. But thanks to prior experience, he knew that by touching Gojo, unlimited void wouldn't affect him. Oh, so Sukuna can use intel by Gojo's domain, but Gojo can't. Alright, bro. And by using a binding vow, he increased the power of his domain outside Gojo's domain by removing his sure hit effect inside his domain while keeping himself safe from infinite void while touching Gojo. Damn, that was a lot. And once again, Gojo's domain collapses. Sukuna is smug as hell now, talking about some what you say about taking it from the top while holding the follow through as Gojo goes flying. Nigga's aura over here was unmatched, but he notices that Gojo's wounds aren't as deep as last time. Thanks to him using Falling Blossom Emotion, that one technique from the three great families. And he wastes no time popping his domain once more, but this time he makes it hella small. Normally, a feat like this would have been straight up impossible, since envisioning a barrier too small to hold yourself would just make it collapse. But due to his time in the prison realm, Gojo was able to figure this out. Sukuna also increased his domain's range, so he can increase the output of his CT. As Gojo's domain begins to start collapsing, everyone realizes that if he doesn't hold out right here, then he might be cooked. Then it shatters, and we see Sukuna's shrine begin to collapse. And it turns out that while Sukuna destroyed Gojo's domain from the outside, Gojo beat his ass on the inside to the point where he couldn't maintain his domain. And now they can't use their curse techniques. Normally, this would be good for Gojo, because he can heal his burnt out CT with RCT. But since Gojo made the mistake of showing that to Sukuna, he can probably do that as well, meaning that it's still tie game. Then they start going at it again. Sukuna going on top of the bridge while Gojo goes on the bottom, playing reverse whack-a-mole. Sukuna makes it up to the railing as Gojo pops up, sees him, and makes a U-turn ecstatic as hell. 
while Goju comes in, fakes the right hook, and goes in for the backhand. Goju starts wondering why Suguna hasn't used any other technique besides the one imbued to his domain. Even when he switched the internal and external conditions of the barrier, he didn't try to destroy the barrier from the inside but the outside, fighting with only domain application against Goju's Limitless, giving him a huge advantage. For the past 3 minutes, Gojo has had the upper hand, but Sukuna still has yet to use the 10 shadows technique. As he thinks this, he sees Maharaga's wheel turn in the darkness, while Gojo bleeds from the inside. But he ignores this, and he and Sukuna pop another domain. They get in once again and start boxing. Gojo hitting Sukuna with a barrage as he tries to go in for the Kyoto combo. But Sukuna attempts to counter trying to stomp on bro, so he's like alright then. Sends him into his own shrine, brings him back, and goes in for the one hand slam, breaking their domains at the same time. Then Gojo comes in with the left, sending Sukuna flying, and then he pops another domain. But Yuta notices that Gojo might have expanded his domain an instant earlier, and he was right. Since Sukuna had to heal his body, he was late in restoring his curse technique, and this led him to take unlimited void for less than a hundredth of a second. That's crazy. And 2 minutes and 40 seconds later, Sukuna's domain collapses. And it looks like Gojo's about to get the dub right here as he goes in for the kill, and then we see Maharaga pull up. Gojo's over here confused on how he was able to do this, but either way, Maho hasn't had time to adapt, so he goes in for the one shot, but it's already too late. As Maho takes the stab at the domain, he breaks it, as he's already adapted. And like I said earlier, it don't matter the attack or the occasion, Sukuna always gonna pop out tough as hell. Nigga over here standing tough as hell for the cameras like he wasn't just about to get cooked. He thinks he's slick. Then the narrator starts explaining on how Sukuna managed to pull this off. Sukuna and Gojo expanded their domains 5 times, in which Gojo's sure hit effect targeted everything within the domain, while Sukuna's sure hit effect targets everything but himself, meaning that Gojo's sure hit effect was still attacking Sukuna. He took on Unlimited Void 5 times while carrying the burden of Maho's adaptation, but the one who really took the burden was... <laughs> As Maho heads back inside, Sukuna is over here asking Gojo what's wrong, but Gojo just happy to see him so desperate, and he's like, look who's talking. Sukuna says that he knew Unlimited Void was going to be a pain, so he decided to take that card out the deck early. By using Megami to adapt to Unlimited Void, using his own technique, thanks to this, he wasn't able to use any technique other than what was imbued to his domain, but that paid off in his own way. But Gojo says that since he hasn't adapted Megami's soul itself to Unlimited Void, he can just open his domain again, and Maho won't be able to bail him out. And confident as hell, he puts up that hand sign and gets ready to cook. But we should have known something was up when Sukuna is over here, hands crossed, laughing that broken ass laugh of his. He says that Goju can't use his domain no more, and we see Gojo start to leak. Sukuna starts saying that Gojo has been straining his brain by using RCT to heal his burnt out technique, and doing something like that once was already risky enough. And if you think this looks bad, if you see the extra page Gege showed of his brain during this part of the fight, he looks even worse. To heal his curse technique, Gojo was using cursed energy to damage his own brain and then using RCT to heal his technique, which is hella risky. And I don't even know what's more amazing. The fact that Gojo is still walking and talking after all that, or the fact that this nigga Yuji needs 5 fingers to count up to 5. I know that nigga was in the 2 teacher classrooms bro, cause there ain't no way. While Gojo falls to his knees, Tsukuna says that Gojo has reached his limit and it's time to call game. And damn. This right here would have been the greatest game winner of all time. Didn't guard up on him when he took the shot to open his domain while putting this man on his knees in front of millions of viewers live and telling the nigga that the only reason why he was hailed as the strongest because I wasn't there? Damn, I know all the niggas who had Sukuna winning round one on their parlay were geeking at this time. And this here is where Maguna really peaked because after this moment right here, it all went downhill. He attempts to pop his domain but that shit collapses on sight, and we see him start bleeding from his eyes. And I know he was pissed off after this shit, bro. Dropped the hardest line in his entire career just for his shrine to malfunction. I can't even lie, I shed a tear while rereading this, bro. Man's really thought he won. And Gojo's over here loving this, out here cackling. He says that his students are watching while proceeding to show five people that he hasn't even taught on screen. And he says he's gonna keep showing off. Then with a grin, he comes in with a devious right hook, officially starting round two. Before we end it off, this video was sponsored by Anime Express. Anime Express has a variety of merchandise from all your favorite animes, such as Jujutsu Kaisen, Naruto, Demon Slayer, One Piece, and others. They got a variety of stuff and cool things, such as hoodies, t-shirts, necklaces, and this dope ass sword over here. Personally, my favorite is the Chosa hoodie, cause as much as I be hating on bro, this shirt is tough as hell. And if you want 10% off, use my code NOAH10 at checkout, link in the description. And yeah, thanks for watching.